This dispute uh, between Japan and South Korea, yeah, according to Hoyle, it is about trade, but underlying it all is this uh, decades-old intractable uh, uh, argument about Japan's behaviour during the colonial era pre-World War II. Now, all this nationalism is politically popular for both uh, Shinzo Abe and President Moon. Uh, so, given that, what hopes are there of resolving this? Well, thanks very much, Paul. I think for the short term, what we're going to see is uh, this tension remain between South Korea and Japan. Um, as you mentioned, uh, nationalism and the politicization of history is, is happening in both states. In the South Korean context, um, the governments have shown that they're not able to uh, remain and, and, and continue to abide by uh, bilateral agreements that have been agreed upon by uh, their president and prime minister. And this makes negotiating at a bilateral level very difficult for not only the Japanese but other states. Uh, on the, uh, the Japanese side, I think that there's real apology fatigue. Um, most conservatives feel that they've done enough, and, and unfortunately, some conservatives as well. They do deny, um, you know, the comfort women and, and, and the forced labor issues in the Japanese context. Um, so they're looking at this issue in very different ways. Um, but what we've seen is the Japanese use the, the rubric of national security to uh, restrict the uh, import of some very sensitive uh, substances that are used in etching chips in South Korea. And that hits, uh, you know, the signature industries, the signature business such as Sansom, um, and it hits them hard in terms of their profitability and potential to produce these products for global export. Yeah, and we already have seen uh, numbers coming through from South Korea that support exactly what you're saying. I mean, this is trickling yeah. through to the real economy. Uh, now, if it drags on and the supply chain becomes diversified, what's this going to mean for the long-term relationship between South Korea and Japan in terms of technology? Well, first of all, I think that if the, this does drag on between uh, South Korea and Japan, what this means is that the, one of those, those important um, bridges between the two countries, that's that interaction of businesses. Um, and, you know, businesses are interested in profit. They're not so much interested in politics. But if this bridge um, does break down, what we're going to see is South Korea and Japan move in fundamentally different directions. Um, South Korea will most likely look for other supply chains to supply these um, substances, substances so they can produce, um, you know, high-quality chips, and that means maybe to move to China, maybe look to the United States. And on the Japanese side, they may look to other markets to sell their products. And what this does in terms of the, the, the end problem is that it could result in supply chain shortening and increasing the costs of, of, of chips. And of course, when we increase the cost of chips, that goes to the businesses and they generally increase the, the cost of, of the products they're producing. So it has the fundamental um, uh, consequence of actually um, bifurcating production networks, supply chains and increasing the cost for consumers. And when costs for consumers increase, what do they do? They stop consuming or they decrease their consumption. That's not good for economies. It's not good for employment. And it's not good for businesses.